Hi everyone, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to create a fancy link previews by using the GSAP and Elementor. What exactly is the link preview in this case? Well, simply put together is the photo assigned to the link of your choice that pops up whenever you do mouse over, over the link of course. The photo remains visible and follows the mouse pointer as long as you stay over the link's hotspot area. This effect relies on a particular data attribute, or the custom attribute. So, those of you not using the Pro version of Elementor are going to be limited to any widget that is capable to generate the hyperlink, like the image, heading, text editor and button. With Elementor Pro, you have an access to the attributes panel, so literally any widget can be used for that purpose. Alright, you've seen what you are about to learn today, let's see what it takes to make it happen. First and foremost, be sure that you have steroids for Elementor installed and activated. After that, go check whether the GSAP library has been enabled. And finally, open a new custom code file. You have to name it somehow, and when it comes to settings, add it to the end of the body and assign the lowest priority possible. If you are not using the Pro version of Elementor, find some WordPress plugin that allows you to add the custom JavaScript and CSS code, such as Simple Custom CSS and JS plugin. I'll leave the link to this video description. I already mentioned that the whole idea relies on the usage of the particular data attribute, so I'm going to go back to the editor and I'll prepare a few links towards that goal. Here in editor, we have a section with pretty much all the widgets that can be used for the purpose of linking. I already said, that's the image widget, heading, text editor, text link, and the button. Every one of them, except the text link, includes the link input field, and every link input field in Elementor comes with a few additional options if you click on that cog icon, of course. What we are interested about today is the custom attribute input field. Essentially, the custom attribute or the data attribute is used to transfer the piece of information from the back end to the front end for whatever purpose we might have. In this case, we're gonna store the URL of the photo that we want to show on the link hover event. The way the photo or the link preview is going to come into appearance is managed by the JavaScript itself. We'll come to that part soon, so let's, let's first assign the custom attribute to every link. Our custom attribute name shall be data hover img. Data dash hover dash img. You can read from the tip text below that the attribute key or the name should be separated by the pipe character from the attribute value. So don't forget that pipe character. In order to figure out the URL of the target image or the attribute value, I'll go to the media library and simply copy everything from the file URL field. Alright, it's a simple copy paste. So I'm going to assign different images to all of my links by following the same procedure. Any link that doesn't include the custom attribute shall be treated as a normal link and will continue to work just normal. I want to mention that our floating link preview effect is not going to work in editor directly, but rather as a preview in browser only. The reason is that the GSAP nor any other third-party library that is available with Steroids for Elementor plugin is not loaded to editor. There are reasons for that. In case you don't know anything about the Steroids for Elementor add-on, I'll add a link to the video description. Steroids for Elementor is completely free and can be downloaded from the WordPress plugins repository just like any other free plugin. You may notice that the custom attribute must be added manually to the text editor text link and uh, the difference is that, that there's an equal character being used instead of the pipe character while the URL of the photo must be enclosed with the quotes. All right. Now that we have all the links ready, let's go back to our initially created custom code file and let's do some JavaScript. It's going to be much faster if I just copy paste all the required code and provide a brief description of how it works, rather than type everything from scratch and describe every line being added. So my code has to be enclosed with the script tags and I'm using the anonymous function to keep my code separated from any other existing code and thus prevent any possible error. Here I'm checking whether the DOM is loaded, that's why I added the event listener which fires up as soon as that happens. When the DIM content is loaded, I can be sure that an external library, in this case our GSAP library, is loaded as well, and I can safely use all of its properties and methods. The second parameter to the event listener is the callback function that's going to be called as soon as the DOM is ready. That's why I put all of my code inside another callable function named runstuff. I already said 
that our floating link preview is not going to work inside the Elementor editor. While the custom code we are creating actually is going to be part of it by default, because that's how things work in Elementor, I have to prevent any JavaScript error raised in editor by the non-existing GSAP object. That's why I'll stop any further code execution if the GSAP library is not found. The variable named hover IMG items is used to store all of the elements that have a custom attribute named data hover IMG, our custom attribute data hover IMG. So the next code block does the iteration or the array of my links with previous, regardless how many of them are on a page. First of all, I grab the value from the data hover IMG attribute and store it to the object being currently in focus, in loop. Next, I have to create a new element that is going to be used as a link preview. It will show up whenever I do mouse hover the parent link and then disappear when the mouse pointer goes off. At this point, the element has been created, the custom class name IMG-Floater has been assigned for the styling purpose, and the required background properties are defined, including the preview image. Here's very simple animation that defines how the element that has been created shows up when the mouse hover happens. GSAPS from 2 is used for that purpose, which allows us to define the initial and the end state of the object being animated. The animation alters the opacity and the scale properties and adds some easing effect with duration. The only part that you should pay your attention to is the pause parameter here, which must be set to true and which is here to stop the animation playhead. Otherwise, all of our link previews would initially be seen all over the screen as if the mouse hover already happened at once. Alrighty, the last parameter, the last part are the mouse pointer events. The mouse enter starts the animation, the mouse leave plays the animation in reverse, pretty much self-explanatory. The mouse move event is a little bit different because it provides another small GSAP animation that actually makes the link preview element follow the mouse pointer. Let's do the CSS part now. My custom CSS code should be enclosed with a pair of style tags, of course. I could have added a new custom code file for the purpose of styling, which would probably be, probably be more appropriate. However, this is by the book as well, and I'll just prepare my CSS code to the same document. The first set of rules defines the size and position of the IMG floater element. We have added IMG floated custom class name in our JavaScript code. It should be positioned absolutely in relation to the parent element, which is our link. I made it fully transparent in order to prevent any flickering while the page loads. Uh, the floating link preview size can be any size you like, you find suitable. I've made my 400 pixels wide and 300 pixels tall. It doesn't really matter, but what really matters are the top and left positions. Why? Because you have to be aware that the mouse pointer is the actual zero point, all right? Therefore, if I want to position my link preview element to the bottom center relative to the mouse pointer, it has to be minus 200 pixels to the left hand side, which is one half of its width, and at least minus 300 pixels to the top in order to move it above the mouse pointer, all right? But I also added 10 pixels extra to these 300 because I wanted to move even more up. It's like adding the, the, the 10 pixels bottom margin. In the same time, I scale the initial size down to 0.1 for the purpose of initial of, of animation, of course. And hence, I decided to animate the link preview element from the bottom center. I want my scaling origin point respects that position as well. I also have to be sure that my link preview element shows up atop of any other element on page. Therefore, I have to provide some higher Z index stacking number, okay? 369 is the perfect number, I guess. And that's all with regards to the styling of the link preview element. Next, I need to be sure that every element or the link that has the custom attribute named data hover IMG is rel relative position. Why is that? Because I have appended another element to it, the span having a custom class name IMG floater, whose position must be relative to the link element itself. Otherwise, it's quite possible that the floating link preview shows up at the wrong place, like far away from the mouse pointer. 
And finally, I have to be sure that every child element of the of the link with the custom attribute name data hover img is not a target of any kind of pointer events such as the click event why is that for well because if i suppress pointer events i can completely cover my link with the floating link preview element and does not compromise functionality of the link itself haha <laughs> it means that the link remains clickable even if covered with a preview element let's save our code and do the final preview Alrighty, everything looks fine. You can clearly see that the animation start from the bottom center, which is our transform origin point. You can witness that the position of the preview element is 10 pixels above the mouse pointer and that the preview element is centered horizontally in relation to the mouse pointer, of course. Uh, two major things left. The first one is how to use the Attributes panel of Elementor Pro instead of the custom attribute and which is pretty much straightforward. For any widget, it doesn't need to be a link that you want to assign the preview image to. Simply choose the Advanced tab, scroll down a little bit until you catch the Attributes panel, expand it and use identical custom attribute name value pair. The attribute name must be data hover img, while the value after the pipe character should be the image URL. The second and kind of more important is the touch devices functionality because we are no longer dealing with a mouse pointer. Maybe you have a different solution, but mine would be to completely disable that effect for all touch devices. How to do that? If you didn't know, Elementor adds another useful data attribute to the body element that provides the information about the device mode. I know that's not the same as the touch device detection, but let's try to keep things simple and make use of what we already have available. So the attribute name is data elementor device mode, all right? While the value changes dynamically and corresponds to the device modes, also known as breakpoints, that were defined in elementor settings. Let's get back for a moment to our custom code and try to deploy that piece of information. Hence the only non-touch device in my Elementor settings is desktop. I don't have white mode enabled. I'll simply disable all mouse hover events for every other device but the desktop. So I'll simply check if the body element has the required custom attribute named data Elementor device mode and if the attribute value is equal to desktop. Like I said, that condition should affect all the mouse pointer events that we use. Alrighty, that's it. The training file link is in the description of this video, so you can download it if you like. You can support my work by leaving the tip, the button is next to the video share button, or you can maybe use my Elementor affiliate link in case you plan to buy the pro version for yourself or your clients. I would really appreciate if you do that. In case you need one-on-one -on -one Elementor training service or you're stuck with your Elementor project or need to solve a particular Elementor related problem, drop me a message and we can arrange the Zoom meeting. Find all the required information in the description below as well. Other than that, stay well, peace and love.